Welcome! Well, it's that time again where it's mukbang time. Oh yes, Tarty, I know you've been waiting for this ever since the last one. And um, just before uh, I get going with the mukbang proper, I'm gonna eat a few fries because I'm starving. I ordered this takeaway like two hours ago. Recording this on a Saturday night. And the takeaway, well, I've used plenty of times for various things. I don't know if they're really busy or the driver got lost. I don't think the driver got lost. So it's quite late, probably later than what I'd like to film this sort of thing. But such is life. Mm. But yeah, I'm ravenous. These are good fries. But it's not the fries that I'm going to talk about, as uh, delicious as they are. Because I want to talk to you today about the joy of fried chicken. And when I talk about some of my favourite meals, I like to eat them with you at the same time. Not literally with you, um, although if you're going to dive into some southern fried chicken right now, then uh, feel free. Here we go. Here is my four piece. That's a lot of chicken of fried chicken or southern fried chicken, SFC, whatever you want to call it. Let's see how this is. Mmm. I think I've got all boneless here as well, which is um, a little bit unusual, to be honest. It does happen now and again. I've even got my rubbish bag here to chuck the bones in, but... I've got these really thick, big breast fillets here. No bone. So, fried chicken. This is a meal that, for patently obvious reasons, I only have very occasionally. There isn't a KFC particularly close to me, and certainly not one that'll deliver. That's probably a good thing because if I was able to get KFC delivery, I would eat this sort of food way more than what is healthy. This for me is like an occasional treat really. My regular takeaway is every Saturday, me and the family have a curry. Ironically, it's a Saturday that I'm recording this. But my mum and my daughters, they went to a birthday party earlier on. So they had pizza and cake and whatever. So, much as I miss my curry tonight, I thought, I've been wanting to do this fried chicken mukbang for ages now. With me dining alone this Saturday evening. It might as well be today. But I love southern fried chicken. Mmm. And this, still nice and hot, without sort of scalding my mouth. The batter, you can see, just standard kind of 
sort of fried chicken batter, but it's nice and moist, it's not all dried up. I've ordered chicken from a few takeaways and you know chip shops and stuff like that. You know, places that I would recommend for most other things, pizzas, burgers, kebabs. But the fried chicken has been rubbish. But from this place, the Charcoal Grill, which I know is a kind of a generic name really in the takeaway world, but that's what it's called. Always impressed me. Sometimes you get boned, like you get your drumstick, you get your thigh that's got some bone in, and then you get your breast as well. But I do like it when they give me all boneless, these really big sort of breast fillets. Well, I think they're all breast, could be thigh, some of them, I'm not sure. Mm. It's really juicy. I've got a cup of decaffeinated tea with it. Unusual, I know, but um, I've made that while I was sat around here waiting and calling the takeaway just to make sure they'd not forgotten me, even though I've got a cold can of Pepsi there that was delivered with this meal. I don't chuck a good cup of tea out. And yes, even though it's decaffeinated tea, it's good quality. It's fairly strong for a decaf cup. I'll grab a few more of these fries. What I like about these charcoal grill fries, well, you have to remember to ask them when you place your order, they'll put chip spice or paprika basically on your fries if you ask them. This gives them a nice little savoury taste. Makes a change from salt, really. Oh, well, it's probably sub salt in the uh, chip spice itself, it's mainly paprika. I mean, this is just as, well, I'd say it's a standard one person meal. Yeah, four big pieces of chicken and a fairly big bag of fries. Yeah, this will feed two people. But, um, yeah, going back to uh, KFC. I do love a Kentucky. I rarely, rarely go. Because, like I say, there isn't one that's particularly close. And I don't drive either, so it's not like I can just sort of get into a car and nip out for a bucket, who were. My go-to meal at KFC, very similar to this really, a three piece with fries and a gravy, our oh, KFC's gravy, mm. That is one thing that I wish the little independent takeaways would do, particularly the ones who make good chicken like charcoal grill here. I wish they'd do gravy. I think closer to my local town centre, there's way more chicken shops and takeaways of that sort of ilk. And probably at least a couple of them will do gravy, whether it's as good as KFC's. Disgusting, I know, but I could just drink that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Although when I have a three-piece meal with gravy at KFC, the gravy is mainly for me fries. There's chicken there, so moist and flavoursome. In my opinion, don't need anything else. Don't need no ketchup, barbecue sauce, gravy.
And I would go as far to say the same about this. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, I've waited nearly two hours for it. It's been worth the wait, and just these really big boneless fillets as well is an absolute uh, bonus as well. So let me know in the comments. Do you like fried chicken? Are you a KFC guy or girl? Or do you prefer your local chicken shop? Um, there's some other ones that are kind of in the UK I'm talking about that are maybe sort of national chains like there's one called Chicken Cottage isn't there which I've never been to. Uh, my brother used to like that place when he visited his ex-girlfriend in Lincoln. I think he would go to Chicken Cottage a lot. No, he always said how better than KFC they were. But I've never had the pleasure. But for me, if I'm craving KFC or Southern Fried Chicken, more precisely, this four piece meal, big bag of fries, can't go wrong. Now normally when I would have this, like I say, and this is something, I don't have it very often, when I'm having other sort of non-curry takeaways, I'll try and sort of alternate them up. Sometimes I'll have a pizza or calzone. Other times a burger, then a kebab. As I say, I'm quite fussy where I get my chicken from as well. But a lot of the time I would order this meal, this exact meal, a four piece, you know, four pieces of chicken and fries. And then chances are I'd end up giving at least one of my pieces of chicken to my eldest daughter as well. She loves fried chicken. My youngest isn't particularly bothered, but... Mm. I'm really enjoying these fries. I'm just mindful not to fill up on them. But I'm about to at least finish this, this chicken during the course of this video. So usually when you get SFC fried chicken from a takeaway or KFC or wherever, you'll get like a drumstick and it's got all the batter on it, the secret spices that, um, I don't think are that secret really, but. You get a drumstick a thigh and a breast and I know you can sort of ask for you know two of one and one of the other or three of something but if you don't bother asking you usually get one or each now weirdly drumsticks and chicken thighs in other chicken recipes I don't like them well thank you for them I can eat a cold chicken drumstick in like a picnic sort of thing and think it's all right. But generally, like sort of if you're having roast chicken on for a Sunday lunch. I'm a breast guy. Yeah, go on. Let's uh, see if we can get some innuendos going in the comments. And a lot of people prefer like the leg, the thigh, or the drumstick. Well, I'm a breast guy when it comes to like a roast chicken. And when I make a curry as well, or when, you know, I order a curry. Got to be 100% chicken breast. I did make a curry years ago. I decided just for a change, I would buy some chicken thighs and cut them up. And um, I wasn't keen, it just, just the texture of the chicken when it had been cooked in the, excuse me, in the curry. I didn't like it. Well, other people who ate the curry said, oh yeah, no, this was nice. No, you can use thighs again if you want. And I'm like, no, weird texture. It's probably just more of a thing with me, really. There's nothing wrong with the flavour. 
the bird of the meat. I just instantly regretted, oh, I should have used chicken breast like I always do. So every time I've made a curry or ordered a curry, I've always made sure to check the menu or, you know, when I've been out shopping, like, yeah, get chicken breast. But with fried chicken, this up, sun fried, KFC style, whatever you want to call it. I like all three types. I like the drumstick, particularly when it's a nice big one. I like the thigh. I still like the breast, as always. So I guess when it comes to fried chicken, I swing three ways. Mm. I love how long it holds the heat for as well. Like this meal has just remained at an optimum temperature, like sort of very warm, but not scalding hot for ages. I think it's because, you know, obviously it's deep fried, this stuff, and then, you know, a lot of that kind of thing, even when it's sort of been travelling a couple of miles in a car and a delivery bag and everything, it's, it does hold the heat for a long time. I'm pretty certain all four of these pieces were breast. It would have been all right to have a variety, just so I could show you the variety and then just sort of talk about them. But I've talked about them anyway. I've never tried making fried chicken. I don't know anyone who ever has. I think it's one of those meals, one of those dishes that's really best left to the experts. Although, as I say, some of the fried chicken I've had from some reputable and very good takeaways, um, it's been poor. Like it's been really sort of tough, rubbery chicken and the batter, the coating, the skin has been kind of dry and just not pleasant at all but this if I was served this like in KFC yeah it's got a little bit of a different taste to KFC not not by much KFC is sort of distinctive isn't it if I was, if I was served this in KFC look four massive boneless chicken breasts there'd be no complaints from me Three down, one to go. <clears throat> if I'm feeling full. Probably not the best idea to be eating uh, all this fried food at this time of night, but it is a one off. <laughs> I've even got a little uh, KFC style handy wipe thing there. I don't know if that was from the last time I went to KFC or was from somewhere else, I don't know. Just found it in my cupboard, so I thought I'd get it out. That's what I was going to say. I'll have a few more fries, but I'll be amazed if I can finish these. Obviously, these have gone quite cool now because fries never keep the heat. So as I say, for a Kentucky Fried Chicken meal, I like gravy as a side. Even though I, all I do is dip my chips in it, dip my fries in it, and then I, like anything that's left, I'll just chug it. I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, um, 
I've got no sides here. I've not even got any sauce or anything. I don't think it needs it. The fries, because they've got the chip spice, the paprika seasoning stuff on them, they're just really nice as they are. And this chicken is just really juicy. It's tender. It, oh, it's just beautiful. So I don't think this needs anything either. But, a side I like, not as much as gravy, but with this, like a side of baked beans, I know baked beans aren't everyone's cup of tea, but often when I've ordered this meal or a similar meal in like a two piece or a three piece from Charcoal Grill, I'll have had a side of beans with it. But there again, it's not really to benefit the chicken, it's just something to have with my fries really. I know at Kentucky, um, a lot of people, including my mother and my youngest, Alice, likes it as well. Corn on the cob. The little uh, half-sized corns with the, all the butter. I used to like corn on the cob when I was years ago, and I just went off it. I just haven't eaten it in about, I don't know, 25 years or whatever it is. I don't really get the connection between chicken and corn. Abigail Barry, any ideas? You're the corn queen after all. I'm not going to get into all that because um, that is exactly the, the wrong sort of topic for a mukbang. I like to compare sort of, not so much in recent years, but in years past, American KFC with British and, you know, American fast food with British generally. And I know one big difference in relation to KFC is over there, they serve mashed potato and it's quite a popular, you know, potato side when you order an American Kentucky and I don't unless the, it came out as like a limited thing and no one bought it years ago I don't think we've ever had mashed potato at the British KFC if I'm wrong and someone does remember it being out here at some point then please correct me in the comments I do get that more than like sweet corn or even baked beans really Because if you've got, it's like a, sort of like a roast dinner you've got, but albeit sort of a deep fried one for the most part. But if you're in America, you're having a Kentucky, maybe it's a Sunday, can't be asked to cook. You order a big bucket of chicken for the family, and then you've got some mashed potato, and then you've got some gravy. I mean, mash and gravy. A staple of uh, many people's kind of roast meals. I have something else my youngest likes, she loves mashed potato. I don't mind it now and again, I need to be in the mood for mash. But I think if um, I walked into a KFC like next month or whenever, and it said there was a poster up or whatever, or a sign, for a limited time only, swap your fries for mashed potato. I think I probably would, just to see what KFC mash is like. Probably nothing special. Could be sort of worse than Cadbury Smash for I don't know. If you don't know what Cadbury Smash is, ask your parent. Or if you're really young, ask your grandparent. They still sell Smash, Instant Mash. It's not Cadbury's though. I always found that weird when I was a kid. Like you see Cadbury's chocolate, and then suddenly, like you're on the kind of processed food aisles at Tesco or Hillard's. It might have been back then if you want to go back further into the 80s and uh, you'd be seeing sort of like your tins of beans, tins of peas, soups and stuff and then like your packet stuff like your Vesta curries and things like that, your pot noodles and then you'd see like a packet of smash and it'd have the Cadbury logo on it and you'd be like, Cadbury made chocolate, yeah, 
I don't think Cadbury's have, um, I think it's some different company now who um, have the trademark for Smash. I'm getting to the end of this meal now. It's been beautiful. I mean, samey. It was like when I did the calzone mukbang. Was that last year? Yeah, it must have been. Every bite was beautiful, but it's kind of the same sort of bite. I mean, a little bit more of variety because there was various topping, you can't call them top, fillings inside the calzone. It was a meat feast, so you were getting slightly different flavours every time. Whereas this, it is just fried chicken. You're getting the same thing in every bite. I suppose with the breakfast roll mukbang, which I know, I know, and he won't admit it, but I know that's the Pop Tart's favourite ever video of mine. That was a little bit samey, but there again, because of the different fillings inside the roll, you know, your bites are, you know, each bite is a little bit different. I hope um, you've enjoyed this, just sitting with me as I eat. I'm hoping the sound quality for this is going to be alright. I decided not to wear my mic as, um, well, A, I didn't like the idea of my mic wire sort of dangling as I'm sort of reaching over for fries and things. And be as a lot of my videos, particularly ones where I'm sat down, if I'm sort of moving a lot, it, there'll just be a lot of rustling. So, but whether I mean whether you find it sort of a bit icky or not, a, a mukbang traditionally, traditionally it's not really that old a thing. But a mukbang really, essentially, is a lot about the noises that someone makes. That's why you sort of, there's like, there's sort of the Venn diagram where you've got mukbang on that side, ASMR on that side, and they sort of meet in the middle, really. But, um, I absolutely enjoyed this. Way too heavy laden and way too deep fried for this time of night, but I won't be having this again, I don't know, it could be another six months or more when I have fried chicken again it is a you know it's high calorific high cholesterol so it's got to be an occasional treat really and that's good because I think when something's you have something occasionally and it's something you really like you enjoy it all the more if I had this even every month it'd soon lose its sort of sparkle it'd soon stop being special no matter how good a quality the chicken the meal was And there we go. Clean tray award for Jimbles, I think. I don't think I can manage any more fries, and if I did, I would do that off camera anyway. But those who sat with me to watch me eat a massive, probably could have done two people, Four piece meal. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed me just sitting here chatting with you about food. <laughs> Always a topic of conversation that I enjoy. Talk about filling my stomach. Oh, I forgot to use my uh, little handy wipe. I'll do that. I don't even know how old this is, but it's, yeah, it still feels fairly moist. So, oh, it's got like a bit of a lemony scent to it. But mm. well, there we are. So that was another mukbang in the bag. Um, I will try and think of another one of my favourite meals to do in a mukbang format. At some point, this is a very occasional series, as you know. And if you've got any ideas, although I'm very fussy, so don't be offended if um, you put um, do a tripe and 
Cod Row mukbang going to tell you to bugger off. <laughs> but um, I'm sure I'll have an idea about what I want to do my next mukbang on sooner or later. And I do hope that all of you will join me for it. But until then, I will say thank you once again, everyone. Special thanks to my subscribers and patrons. And do please join me again next time for my next mukbang eating video. Cheers, everyone. See ya!